Okay, <clears throat> welcome everyone. Uh, so today we will continue from what we did yesterday. Uh, so if you weren't here yesterday, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to be share. Uh, I'll be sharing my uh, the project we uh, worked on yesterday. Um, so just take a look at the uh, at the comments when I uh, share the link. So uh, everyone, uh, go to scratch.mit.edu. And then, um, actually, you know what? Here, just go to this link instead. Uh, this is my uh, the project, <clears throat> the project that uh, we made yesterday. Just click on that project, and uh, I, I there's a button called Remix. Uh, click on that button. A remix just means you grab my project, and uh, now that project is yours, uh, and uh, you will start editing that project. So. So when you go in this project, uh, you'll see this. Uh, when you press play, it should be a very simple project. Um, you'll be in the middle of the world, and then uh, you're, um, you're already going through this. So if you did this already, you don't have to go to the link and remix. Uh, you could just use yours. Uh, that's for uh, Min. Min, you worked on uh, yesterday, so you can just use yours. It's exactly the same. I didn't change anything. Um, so for the ones that weren't here yesterday, just click on that link. Uh, and just click Remix, and uh, you should have it in your profile. OK, just let me know when everyone uh, Let me know in the chat when uh, you have your, uh, your uh, project ready so we can move on. Is everyone ready to move on? Tony, are you ready? Isaac, are you ready?
Um, are we doing it? What do you mean? Are we now doing it? What do you mean we're doing it? You're just uh, getting the project we did yesterday. Wait, I didn't have that. You don't have this? Yeah. Did you click on Remix? Wait, how? Wait. So I need to go and... It's... So on the chat, click on the link. Okay. And chat. Click on the link. Okay. And then it opens a web page. Yeah, scratch. And then okay. click remix. Yeah, click on remix. Remix. Remixing. Editor. Moving platform remix. Remix. Remixing copies a project. Yeah, that's exactly what I want them to do because they don't have the project we ha we worked on yesterday. Um, so only you have the project. So I want them to just follow along from where we left off. Okay, did you get it, um, Tony? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so uh, let's uh, let's start the project. So um, like I said, you guys can um, just press the flag and then the game should appear. Um, oh, the only change you need to do is if you click on the little cat on Sprite 1, um, there is a, uh, there's a, uh, a variable here that's called scroll X. Uh, uh, let me see. Zoom in. Yeah, right here. It's called scroll X. So this scroll X, change it to negative uh, 180. And then set uh, this one that says change X by. <laughs> 150. Oh, sorry. Yeah, negative 150. Uh, change it to negative 150. And then um, change x by 0. Right. And that's the beginning of your map. Okay. So your game should look something like this. Okay. And then to jump, you press spacebar. To move, you do uh, A or D. D is to move forward. A is to move backwards. Okay. Now, um, so let's get started with uh, programming uh, points. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide all these um, these variables. We don't need these variables. So just click on variables and just uncheck all the variables so you uh, you hide them. Okay. Um, and then there's one more. It's called level hitbox. Click on the hitbox and just go to its variables and then and just uncheck it. Okay, so we're unchecking all the variables so they don't display on the screen. Hitbox? Where's hitbox? Hitbox is the it's the second sprite uh, next to the cat. It says level hitbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, okay. Level hitbox. Okay, so once you unchecked all the variables, um, we're going to make uh, two new variables. So let's go back to the cat. Uh, we're going to make two variables. The first variable is going to be called score, and then the other one, high score. Okay, score is going to keep keep track of your current score, and your high score is going to be uh, is going to keep track of your um, the highest score you've uh, done so far. Okay, so um, on your cat, look for an empty space. Oops. Uh, let's look for an empty space. Uh, like here, uh, I'm going to do it to my right. Oops, no. Not letting me scroll. Maybe down here. That's fine. Okay, so I'm going to make my new block here. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to do just the normal stuff. So when the flag is clicked, and do a loop forever. Okay, so basic stuff. OK, so once you have that, um, the next thing we're going to do is make two variables. Like I said, one variable is going to be called score, and then the other one, high score. So let's click on variables, and click on make a variable. And then this variable, we're going to type um, score. 
and then just press OK. This is going to be for all sprites. Press OK. And then we're going to make another one, make a variable, and then we're going to type high score. Okay. And then press OK. We have two variables. One is called score, and then the other one, high score. Okay, so once we have these two um, these two variables ready, uh, of course we need to set high score and our score to zero. So grab a set block, set uh, variable. So we're gonna grab two of them. The first one is gonna is gonna be score. So we're gonna set score to zero, and the second one is gonna be set high score to zero. Okay, once we have the scores, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to add points depending on how far our cat went. So um, what we're going to do is we already have a variable called x, um, scroll x, and then scroll x is basically giving a position how much has the cat traveled. And depending on that, we're going to um, give the player points depending on how far he, uh, he's gone. So uh, we're going to set, we're going to put here set score, uh, set score to, and then we need to figure out the number here. And the number is going to be scroll x. So we're going to look, look for variable, scroll x. And what we want to do with scroll x, because scroll x is a huge number. It goes from, I think, negative uh, 150 to uh, 4,000 and some, 40,000 and something. Uh, I don't remember. So scroll X does become a huge number. So what we want to do is we want to reduce this number by multiplying a decimal. So if you multiply a decimal, so we go to the operators and look for the multiplication. So we put scroll X in here. And uh, we're going to multiply by 0 0.05 to give us a good small number. Okay. Now this is going to give us a decimal number. And uh, we are... Um, I don't like putting decimal numbers. I like doing round numbers. So what we're going to do is we are going to round this number um, and uh, give it uh, and put it onto our, our score here. So, but if I press play and uh, I, I set this like this, so I just press play. At the beginning, you see it says negative seven point five. So the reason why it's saying negative seven point five because it's um, uh, because we are at negative position because our uh, our world is shifted to the uh, to the right when we start, so our scene can look a little better. Uh, that's why it's giving us a negative number. So to fix that, we need to add uh, 7.5 to our number to to fix that problem. So um, let's grab an add blo block and let's put it here. So uh, this is the multiplication, and then we're putting the multiplication block in here after. Uh, inside the plus sign, inside the plus block, and then we're adding 7.5, okay? So it's going to be scroll x times 0 0.05, and that gives us a number. And then uh, because when we start, we have to give it an offset, and that offset is 7.5, okay? Again, this number is going to give us a decimal number. So what we want to do is we want to round this number. So uh, let's look for round um, block. So round this number, and we're going to insert it here. Okay. And then we're going to put this inside score. And now when you press play, now when you move right, you should see your score counting up. So now if you see my score, it's going 30. Now it's 40. I stop moving, and it's, it's stuck at 48. Now when I move backwards, my score goes negative. I mean, not it goes negative. It uh, starts going backwards. So the reason why that happens is... Um, because uh, our, it's based on our position. And then this, we're going to leave it alone. Uh, we're not going to change it because uh, we should penalize the player if he goes backwards. If he goes backwards, it's not a good option. But if you go forward, that's good. So we reward the player for going forward. 
but uh, we're punishing the player if he starts uh, going backwards. We start subtracting uh, the the score, and we're gonna leave it like that. Okay. Uh, now the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out our high score. How do we know when do we reach our high score? So the high score is only um, we're only going to memorize the high score when uh, points is greater than the high score. So here we're going to do a simple if statement. We're going to go to control, and we're going to grab an if statement. If block, sorry. And uh, we're going to compare. We're going to say if points is greater than high score. So if my points or score, sorry, is greater than high score, right? That means the current score I just got is higher than the high score. Then my high score becomes a new score. No, sorry, my score becomes a new high score, sorry. Okay, so if uh, my score is greater than the high score, then set high score to score. Okay, so now when you press play, now my high score, take a look, it's going up, right? But now when I go backwards, my high score stays, but my, my score stays there, okay? Because that is my new high score. Unless I go and beat that high score, now my high score goes up with my score. I go backwards, it's the same thing. Okay? And we're going to do something about these, uh, these pain blocks, this, uh, these little blocks that we have here. Let me know when you're ready.
Okay, are we ready to move on? Okay, we're moving on. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, we are going to activate our, our pain blocks. Um, so whenever we touch these blocks, of course, they're going to reset us um, to our original position. So if you uh, see here, our original position is negative 150. Uh, we are going to reset to that location, our scroll X. So um, let's go to the pain, or pain scripe, scr uh, sprite, sorry. Uh, and uh, here we are going to check if we if the player touched us. So here we're going to go to control, not control, sorry, events. We're going to go to the flag, and we're going to say forever. So when I click the flag, forever check something. We say if touching uh, sprite one. Okay. So if we're touching sprite one, so that means the player touched us. Uh, we want to reset his scroll X. So we're going to say variables set scroll X to negative 150. Oops, not negative, that's negative 150. Okay. Now we do have a problem here. Uh, the reason why is uh, here we're treating each clone as, uh, I mean, we're having this uh, flag thing, but then the flag, uh, the normal one or the original one hides. So what we want to do is actually remove this when the flag is clicked and then change it to when I start as a clone because each clone has to check for uh, the player. So we're going to put this away and instead grab a when I start as a clone. So now when you start as a clone, you press the flag and when you touch uh, a um, one of the little spiky things, you're, you're going to reset. There you go. I was able to reset. So now whenever you fall into the little spiky things, it's going to reset you back to the uh, original position. So now here I can go, actually play the game, go up here. Oh, um, so here, if you have an issue going up here, uh, the reason why this happens is because your character is too big. Um, so click on your um, your cat and then reduce it from 40, put it, put it like 30, um, and then that should help you out. Because uh, these, uh, this part is pretty thin, and then the 40 is not going to be able to fit. So put it down to 30, maybe even 25 if you want. Uh, but 30 looks good. So here you can play, continue playing the game, and then you see my high score and my score keep going up because I'm okay now. I I just uh, I wasn't able to pass it. So now my high score stays at 127 when my score resets. So my score is back. Okay, now it's back to zero. Now I'm going back. Doing good so far. Okay, let me see if I can pass my. And I did pass. Oh no, I didn't. Sorry. Up here. Yep, I'm passing it. So let's see. If I can continue. And you see my high score is still going up. Yep, so you can, oh, and I, uh, I fell down. So that's another thing we need to uh, uh, take care of if you fall down. If you fall down, uh, if your X is less than a certain number, I'm sorry, your Y is uh, less than, let's say, like 100, uh, that means you fell down and you get to restart. So that's another condition we need to, we need to do. So uh, stop playing. Go back to Sprite 1. And, oops, uh, okay. And then here, uh, we're going to do another um, another if statement. So uh, let's grab another if. Okay. And then here, what we need to do is we need to check if my y is at a, a crosses a certain location. So um, we need to say if um, less than, and we're going to go to our motion, and we're going to grab y position. So here, we're going to say if y position is less than, let's just say, uh, let me stop the game. Thanks. I think less than 100 should be fine. Yeah, because all our maps are, well, maybe 120. Anything less than 120 should, uh, you know, your, 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 or maybe a little less. Let's see. Negative 150 for sure. So negative um, 150. I didn't hear that, so.
Um, okay. So what you're gonna do is go to sprite in a one, uh, the first sprite, uh, the, the cat, uh, and then we're gonna add an extra if statement to the block we were just working on. So with the scores, uh, we're gonna put an if statement. And in this if statement, we're gonna grab our uh, less than sign from our operators. And we're gonna grab our Y position from our motion and we're gonna attach these together. And we're gonna say if Y position is less than negative 150. So if we cross that number, um, then uh, we're gonna reset. So here we're gonna put it here and we're going to set X scroll, scroll X to negative 150. Okay. And this should work out for you. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, set scroll X to zero uh, to negative one fifty, and my Y has to reset. So my Y is going to go back to zero. So here we're going to say set Y to, and we do zero. Okay. Uh, maybe it's not zero. Is it maybe a hundred. Yeah, it's still bouncing. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's too far. <laughs> Let's do maybe uh, twenty. Yeah, twenty looks good. So uh, when we fall, and then we just restart. And when we touch the spike, we restart. OK, that's perfect. Um, I think what we're going to do instead is we're going to broadcast, because we need to reset our Y also. Because if, if we're in a different block, if we're in a lower block and we touch that the spikes, but this doesn't happen in this level, because these levels are not designed like that. But just in case, let's just say like you put a spike down here. And if you, uh, you know, if you touch it, then it's going to reset you back, but you're going to be in that low position. So we need to reset you back with the, with the Y. Like, for example, here, if I touch this block, because this, thing, this block is high, when we reset, our Y position is going to be up here. So now if I touch this, you see, it's, uh, my X was, is this, now this is, the X is the same, but now our Y started up here. So we need to change our Y to be always up here. Set Y to 20, because if I touch this, it's going to be in the same place. So we're going to fix that. What's your question? And I didn't, I didn't even catch it, the pain block stuff. Huh? I didn't get the pain block stuff. What you, you didn't get the code yet? Yeah. With the code, this is just the code we got. OK. When I start as a clone, Forever and then if statement. If then touching Okay, I'm done. Okay, so um, let's continue with the sprite. Oh, yeah, so uh, this should work. Um, now what we're going to do is instead of um, resetting this, we are going to broadcast a reset instead. So um, let's go to events. <clears throat> and then uh, let's uh, unplug this, the set scroll X to negative 150. Uh, and instead, we are going to broadcast. So here, we're going to go to broadcast message. And instead of a message one, we're going to make a new message, and we're going to call it restart. Okay. And you just put the restart up here uh, in, in the two blocks we just, uh, we just pulled out of here. So all we're doing is pulling these two blocks out of there, uh, convert, uh, changing it to broadcast restart. And then it's going to say, when I start restart, uh, when I receive restart, it's going to do these two blocks. Okay. 
Okay. And then what we need to do is since we change this uh, to this, uh, we're going to change it to the with the hitbox too. So let's go to the hitbox. So level hitbox. And then here uh, where we, where is it? No, sorry, the pain, not the hitbox, the pain. Uh, so here where we did the pain stuff, um, when I start as a clone, forever touching this, all, all this stuff. So the pain stuff, um, we are going to, instead of saying scroll X to negative 150, we're just going to broadcast restart. So erase this scroll X from uh, here and then change it to broadcast restart. Because with that broadcast, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take care of everything else. So that takes care of a problem. So when you touch the sprite, now it resets to that cool, uh, that good position. So when I fall down, same thing. So that takes care of all the resets. So whenever you want to reset the game, um, you just uh, uh, invoke that uh, broadcast and restart. Okay, and it works. Okay, so let's continue. Um, the next, <clears throat> sorry, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add uh, collectibles to this game. Uh, so whenever we collect something, it's going to add extra points to our current score. So whatever our score is, plus that many, uh, that much score. So, um, well, actually, you know what? No, we're gonna have it separate. We're going to make a collectibles variable, meaning how much stuff you collected. Uh, that is separated from the coins. Eh, it's a little weird, but uh, we're going to do it this way. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to copy what pain is, and instead we're going to um, uh, we're going to replace it with our own sprite or we're all, with our own thing. So uh, click on the plane, right-click it, and duplicate it. So here, I just right-clicked here, where it says pain, and then duplicate. Uh, and then when you duplicate it, it should have exactly the same... Um, the same code, uh, but the only thing we're gonna change is, uh, well, we are gonna change something in the code. We're gonna change the costume now. So let's click on costume, and then we're gonna go to level one, part one, okay? Make sure you're completely zoomed out out of the canvas, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start, uh, instead, we're gonna use these triangles uh, as references to add Wait, our collectibles. Huh? How do I do that? What do you mean? How do you duplicate? Yeah, how do I do the paint two stuff? Paint two? Oh, look, this is what you need to do. Right click on the sprite. Yeah, right click on the sprite and then duplicate. Duplicate. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so once you click uh, click on that and then go to costume and then go uh, click on co uh, level one, part one, the first mm -hmm. uh, costume, okay? And okay. in that costume, what we're going to do is we're going to make our collectible. So um, I'm just going to make uh, a golden coin. Uh, you can do whatever collectible you want, uh, but I'm just going to draw a simple circle, a uh, yellow circle. So let me change this to like a yellow color Wait, like this. Wait, isn't it uploading? I'm sorry? Can we do uploading? Mm, you can, but it's going to be difficult to uh, upload your, your own uh, sprite. Because if here, uh, you don't have an upload function for the, the existing uh, oh. uh, thing. Okay. So I, I, I suggest you drawing your, your own little sprite. Uh, because these, uh, these sprites are, you see this one, it, this number says, 131 by 48, and then 121 by 49. Uh, these are the sizes for all the sprites. So just make sure you stay with these uh, sizes. OK. Um, so then, like I said, I'm going to make my little circle. And I'm just going to plop it in, let's just say, there. OK. So once I have this circle, I'm going to delete my other triangle. OK. And then when I, uh, when I press play, so now you see that, that the circle is there now. Okay. And this circle is going to act like my coin. Right now, it's acting like uh, uh, the little spikes because uh, it has the same code. So we need to change that. But for now, this is going to be our, our, um, our circle. Okay. 
So uh, let's put a pause on that. Um, so just just draw the circle. Just kind of get the you know the hang of where to put the circle. And what we're gonna do is we need to change the code so we can start testing what's going on when we um, when we touch the the coin and then we can move further uh, in the in the map. So let's go to a code. Yeah. And then here, instead of broadcast restart, so this is going to be very simple. Instead of broadcast restart, what we're going to do is we're going to broadcast another one. Um, well, actually, you know what? Um, what are we going to do? Hmm. Yes. Uh, so here, uh, what we need to do is we need to change um this part because uh when we touch the sprite uh so we're going to get rid of bro broadcast restart so remove that um so here what's going to happen is we're going to we get we need to fix this one uh when i start as a clone and then move the level because this one when you touch the sprite it's still going to show up because this code is the one showing it up because we're still in that uh location so we're going to add an extra variable that says uh are you touched if you are touched that means, you know, stop, don't show anymore. Uh, and then if we restart the whole level, then everything's going to um, go back. It's going to show. So here, what we're going to do is when I start as a clone and then when I'm touching sprite one, I'm going to hide. So I'm going to look for hide. And then I'm going to make another variable. So I'm going to go to variables, make another variable. And this variable is going to be called hidden. And this one is going to be for this sprite only. So make sure you click on this, this sprite only. Okay, make sure it's hidden. Okay, and press okay. And now um, we grab a set block and we're gonna set hidden to one because it is now hidden, okay? So this is what I'm talking about. When you uh, press the flag, I go to that, um, uh, that coin, right? It's hidden. But now if I walk away, that coin starts uh, shows up again. So that's something we don't want. We want it, when we collect it, we want it to go away. Unless we restart, then it starts back. So uh, to fix that problem, um, so here we have set hidden to one. And then here, to, with the other block, the block that's already there, um, we are going to, here where it says show, we're going to add another if statement asking, can it, can it be shown? If it is, then it, it, it can show. If it's not, then it can't. So here... <clears throat> We're going to grab an if statement, an if block, sorry. Um, and we're going to put it inside here. So it's going to say else, and then we have another if block. And then this if block, we're going to ask if equal, um, if hidden, if hidden equals zero, no. Yeah. If uh, hidden equals zero, then show. If hidden equals one, then it's not going to show anymore. So now when I press the flag and I touch this coin, now I walk away. That coin is now per, uh, now it's um, now it's hidden until we restart the game. So the reset's not gonna it's not gonna bring it back. It's still hidden. So that's something we need to fix. But now it that that coin is um, on. Okay. And now uh, to fix that. Uh, to fix the coin to come back after respawn, uh, what we're gonna do is we go to events, and then when I reset, when I receive restart, all we're gonna do is set hidden to zero. Okay, and then when you flag, you can collect the coin. Uh, the coin appears again, collected, and then when you restart, the coin That's still the appears. Problem with mine, like every time I press D, then the hitbox is costing the show, and then it doesn't move. Mm, can you share your screen so I can see what's going on? I'm pressing D, but it's not moving and it stays. And then I move it, it goes back to hit <clears throat> And it doesn't move when it's on hit box. Uh, can you press a flag? 
Okay. Uh, let's see. Stop. Okay. Can you go to uh, the cat? Yeah. Um. Let's. No. 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 Um. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, scroll down. Well, let's keep scrolling down. Okay. Uh, scroll down to your reset. Where's your reset? There you go. Um, okay, so there's your problem. Uh, it says set Y, and then I think you have a bunch of twos. It says two, 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 two. You see the code? I just wanted to spawn from the sky. Yeah, just give it a smaller number. Just give it a hundred. Or oh, two thirty five, that's fine. That's my good thought. Hit box problem. Oh, come on. Hmm. Why is your position less um Can you scroll up a bit? Um, I think I know your problem. Your you moved your switch costume cat A has to go uh, below your if statement. You have it. Wait. Yeah, you moved your. Okay, I see your problem. <laughs> Stop your game. Okay, you see how your if statement is inside your other if statement? Um, yeah, that, uh-huh. Wait, click it out. Yeah, no, no, you were correct. No, no, you were correct. Yeah, uh-huh, good. And then put that one right below it. There you go. Mm -hmm. Now press the flag. There you go. Yeah, you had your if statement in the wrong one's location. right in the spike. <laughs> so, yeah, you need to change your uh, spike, uh, the little uh, ball location. So go to uh, the custom. So you can edit it while it's playing. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Don't change the size. Leave the size to 100. Yeah, don't change the size. Why? Um, because you need to change it um, in the in the drawing. So go to uh, press play. Press the flag. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Just leave it there for now. Press the flag. No, don't put it in the center. Look, press the flag. Okay, so now from its perspective, yeah, from its perspective, uh, okay. Oops. I thought I was deleting the spike. Yeah, see, now you drew it there, so now click on the, um, click on the mouse, then I click on the mouse button, yeah, that one, mm -hmm. and now move it, see, when you move it, you actually move it in the, in the game. So that's exactly what you need to do with all the coins. Mm -hmm. And once you like it, once you like a position, then uh, start playing, and you should be able to capture it. There you go. So now um, reset yourself. No, I touch the spike. No, no, play the game, touch it, and then touch the spike. Mm -hmm. And your stuff is not resetting. Why is it not resetting? Oh, do you, did you have the last part, the one we just made? Um, it looks like you don't have it. Uh, can you uh, can you put a block called uh, when I start as a um, when I receive a restart set the hit into zero mm -hmm. zero yeah and that should work okay, mm -hmm. that and then you reset perfect okay and then your your score keeps getting I mean that your coin keeps resetting okay. All right, so let me go back to my presentation. Oh, and is there just only one of those coins? No, uh, we're going to make more coins. The The purpose of this was just to show um, the position and resetting these coins. 
um, but we're gonna do more coins right now, okay? So uh, make sure you pay attention. So uh, we have the coins, okay? And what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna click on pane number two, okay? Uh, let's go to costumes, and then we're gonna do the same thing with the other uh, spikes, okay? So what I would like you to do is go to the first one, the first one, and then copy what you just made, okay? Let's just highlight like what I'm doing, or copy, and then press Control C to copy. And then when you go to the next level, just press Control V, and then you're able to move. So um, you don't have to redraw them over and over again. Now, this one's a tricky one. How do you know where to put this uh, this coin or where to put it? Uh, yeah, where to put this coin in the game? So to figure that out, what you're going to do is just press play and go to that location. So when you go here, you see my, uh, my coin is here. So now if I move my coin, it dynamically moves it in the screen. So let's just say I want it here. Right, and that's exactly where I'm going to leave it. I'm going to destroy my other triangles, and then now my uh, my coin is up here. So now I'm able to collect this coin. Now for the third part, I do the same thing. I paste, Control V. So then I move. Uh, let's see, move a little bit to the right, and now you see my coin is there. If I don't like my coin there, I can move it to anywhere I want. I delete the other triangles, and then there we go. Okay, so now I make a challenge. And I'm going to keep doing this until uh, uh, for the rest of the other blocks, okay? So I would like you to do this for the next five, uh, five level parts just for uh, to, sh to show. Uh, the rest of the uh, circles, you can do it later, okay? So I'm going to give you guys uh, 10 minutes um, to work on this. So just put the coins anywhere you like, destroy the triangles, um, and then just put them in your map. So make sure you pr press the flag button so you can see where the, uh, where the coins are going to be. So just like uh, on my uh, on my screen. All right, so I'll give you guys ten minutes. Okay, let me know if you have any questions on the comments. Uh, if you don't want collectibles, then you can instead uh, put more enemies or more spikes if you want that. Make it more challenging. But for that, you have to go to uh, pain, uh, the first pain, not pain two, the first pain. Pain two is only for collectibles. Miranda? I'm sorry, I went to get a drink of water. Uh, what was that, Min? You wanted to... Uh... Add enemies to shoot? Uh, you can. Um, the only thing with that is... Um, um, oh, the enemy shootings part would be... We need to add more logic to it, but... Uh, yeah, well, we're not we're not gonna focus on that one right now. If you want to do it, you can, because um, you have uh, seven more minutes left. Um, you, you can if you if you think you can do it, you can. Uh, but that's not gonna be the focus of the. Like I want the enemies to try to get you, but you have to shoot them to make them disappear. Like I said, you can, but I'm not gonna be going through that right now. Um, again, I'm just 
and you have six minutes left and just letting everyone else do their collectibles. Uh, once we're done with the collectibles, we're moving on to another thing. And can we have a variable that can collect, that can have the number of all the stuff that we collected, the collectibles? Yeah, we're doing that after. So that's why I told you guys, uh, that's why I told you to um, do the five coins. Uh, once you have the five coins, then we're going to do the, the variable that uh, keeps track of how many coins you collected. Okay, so first do all the five coins, and then uh, we'll continue from there.
Okay, you guys have one minute left. Uh, make sure you uh, at least have five coins so we can uh, test our coin catching. Okay, so let's uh, continue. So now that we have at least five coins in our um, in our game, uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we're going to do the same logic where we touch if the player touches us. Uh, instead, we're gonna have a separate variable that's gonna increment uh, or it's gonna add up uh, based on how many uh, coins you collected. So uh, let's go to the um, uh, paint two or the collectibles. And uh, we're actually going to rename this. So I don't want it. I don't want it to be called Pain Two. So on the costumes, uh, sorry, not on the costumes. Uh, here, right on top, it's a sprite name, and it's called Pain Two. So if you click on your sprite uh, down here, it says Sprite. So instead of Pain Two, we're going to call this Collectibles. Um, just so uh, we know it's uh, different uh, than Pain. Uh, so here, Collectibles, and uh, what we want to do is here where it says um, touching sprite one. So instead of uh, just the touching sprite one, we want to add a point. So here, um, let's uh, add a variable. So we're going to go to variables and then make a variable. And this variable is going to be called um, collected. So how many coins have you collected? I press OK. And what we want to do with this is we want to change collected by one. So simple. So when we press the flag, we touch one, and then my collector goes up by one. I collect the other, my collector goes two, and then so on and so forth. Now, the collected will not reset um, because we have not reset it, um, uh, the coins. So uh, when we reset the, uh, the restart um, level. So what we're going to do is when I receive restart, what we want to do is here, we're going to set collected to zero. So basically, we're just starting um, our collected back to zero. So when I press flag, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. And we also, when we start the game, so um, here when it says uh, when flag is clicked, we can set collected to also zero. Okay. So here when we collect, it, it was set collected to zero. And then here when we restart, we collected it back to zero. So now when I press the flag, my collected is zero. I collect one, it goes up to one. I reset, it goes back to zero. And uh, let's check this out with another one. So I grab another one, and then I fall, and my collector goes back to zero. Okay. Uh. Now we need to make this. What was that? We need to make this now. Yeah. So add this part of the code with the collector. Okay. So, Those so three. It, I'm sorry. Those three. Yeah, so these three and then uh, here set collected to zero. So this uh, this line here with uh, the flag. So we're just adding this block here to the flag.
OK, so are we ready to move on? OK, uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to frame this um, this window. Uh, what is uh, the reason why we're going to frame this uh, frame this is because if we uh, play the game, you see when uh, when I start the game and I move a little bit to the left, I'm on the edge. Uh, this is a little annoying where the coin is there and the um, little triangle is there. So it's it's showing. Um, so then when I move forward, then it goes to its correct position. But then now I see the other objects um, that are there. And it's a little annoying to see. Um, so to fix that problem, uh, we're going to frame the whole, uh, we're going to frame this uh, the screen. Basically, we're just going to cover the sides and then uh, so that so that we won't be able to see that. So. Uh, let's click, click on um, choose a sprite, and we're going to paint the sprite. So click on that. And we're going to make this cube, so uh, I mean rectangle. So um, make sure you click on the rectangle. Uh, there's no fill, so remove the fill, and then put an outline. Uh, the outline, um, I, let's see, how big should we put the outline? Um, uh, nine. Let's nine. Oh, 50. Let's make an outline of 50. Okay, And what we're going to do is we're going to make a square. So square like this. And it's going to be from edge to edge like that. OK. And uh, at this edge, I'm going to make it white. So I'm going to remove the color. OK. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to frame it. I'm going to put this um, at 0, 0. So my x at 0 and my y at 0. So now when I press play, now I don't have that. Uh, so if you see to the right, I don't have that weird, um, you know, triangle popping up in my in my screen. So I'm able to collect this, and then you see I don't have anything here. Okay. To make this look a little better, also I don't know if you noticed that the sprites have some lamps uh, on the in the game. So that means uh, this game is uh, in the night. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some uh, background. Uh, some uh, we're gonna do some parallax scrolling with this. Um, so uh, let's click on the background, <clears throat> on the stage background, and just make a square and then make it completely black. So uh, one, remove the outline, and we're going to fill with completely black. So we're going to make a black square like that, OK? And uh, that looks a little better. Well, actually, let me see. Uh, remove. Not too bright, black. Something like that. Mm, a little darker. Yeah, that's good. OK. And then our scene looks a little better now. Okay. We have a black background, and then we have some nice lamps uh, that are lighting up the, the night. Okay. And we have our collectibles, our spikes. Can you help me in oh, this thing? Get a, not yell in the mic, dude. OK, um, what, what do you need help in? I mean, I'm trying to do this stuff, but I just can't like put it on the edge. OK, can you uh, share your screen? So I just deleted it. Okay, so like this, the color saturation zero brightness. Are you going to share your screen or? 100. I think I did. Wait. What? Oh, 
Ok, okay. am mai văzut chestii. Then boom, I made it. Okay, good. And then it comes out like this. Yeah, change your um, change your. Uh, can you remove that? Where it says Chrome OS share sharing the screen. Um, yeah, remove that. Okay, you see it says X and Y. It says thirty six and twenty eight. Change that to zero and zero. See, now it's uh, centered. Now, it's okay uh, now? Yeah, it looks good. Uh, just a little bit more. It has to be a little bit. Uh, so on the on the drawing, you have to make it a little bit. Maybe make it a little bit thicker. So instead of 50, do 55. Maybe uh, that works. Or if you like it like that, that's fine. Yeah. You just do 55 maybe. Mm -hmm. Paint. Mm -hmm. And then make it completely black. Mm. Fill. Minus zero. Okay, now I got it. Cool. Uh, so let's uh, let's go back and continue. Uh, let me uh, share my screen again. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to make uh, little kind of stars uh, that's gonna move uh, depending on where we are. So uh, just like we did on our other previous um, class where we have little dots that are moving uh, depending on your um, your position. So uh, that's what we're going to do. So um, let's um, – so, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to create one more sprite. So let's go here to the sprite, choose a sprite, paint, and we're going to make just a white circle, okay? Small white circle. So we're going to make it white and – just make a circle like that. Um, so if you see on your screen, uh, the circle will pop up. But this is too big, so make it smaller. Um, and then make sure you make it centered. So make sure it, uh, there you go, that's that's the size I like. Okay, so just a small little dot like this. And this is gonna be a star, okay? If you wanted another shape, uh, that's fine. Uh, but this is gonna be my star, just a little ball, a white ball, okay? Then make sure you have, uh, make sure you make it small and make sure it's centered, okay? Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do, uh, let's go to the code. Uh, and then we're gonna program this. Uh, to sh one, it's going to make uh, several clones, and then those clones are going to be scattered in a random position in the random uh, in in the screen. Uh, and then we are going to, depending on what button we're pressing, that's that's the location where um, the stars are going to move. So uh, let's go to the. Of course, we're going to click on the flag. So when the flag is clicked, um, one. Well, of course, we want to hide the original one. So let's hide this. And uh, we're going to repeat for several, several, uh, several um, clones. We're going to do five clones. If you want to do more, that's fine. Uh, but I'm just going to stick to five for now. And uh, what I want to do is I want to go to a random position. Um, uh, I, yeah, I want to go to a random position. But I don't want it to go very random because this bottom part, starting from negative 100, 
to the bottom. Uh, we don't care anymore because we can't see it. The platform is always uh, there. And plus, when you're doing uh, stars, they're always above. They're not, you know, at high, uh, you know, where the player is. Um, so we're gonna do it on top. So uh, we're gonna grab a, a go to block, and go to X Y, and then this go to X Y is gonna be randomized. So uh, let's go to a random block, and we're gonna grab two random blocks. The first one is going to be uh, our X. We don't care about our X. It can be from negative 235 to 235. So we're going to type negative 235 to 235, OK? Our Y is the one we care about. So uh, the the where we want our Y is it's going to be from 150 to, sorry, negative 150 to 150, OK? That's going to be from my lowest to my highest, where my, um, where my lowest uh, cloud is, I mean, um, star is going to be. So um, negative, let's take a look at where negative 100 is. So this is a negative 12, negative 100 is around, actually, you know what? Negative 150 is a little too low. Yeah, it's way too low. Um, let's bring it up here. So this is oh, zero, I think. Yeah, I think zero is good. So zero all the way to 150. Yeah, so actually we're gonna change this from zero to 150, okay? There's gonna be any random uh, number uh, location here in this uh, this vicinity, okay? Once we have that, uh, what we're gonna do is of course create a clone. So let's go to uh, control and we're going to create a clone, okay? And then of course, the last thing we're gonna do is when I start as a clone, show. And when you press play, you should see uh, your five um, random stars that are uh, in your game. And when you move, of course, it's not going to move because we need to add that part. It's going to do parallax scrolling. Okay. Uh, and also one more thing. Notice how this, the stars are right in front of uh, the sprite. So let me get to a point where things are right in front. So you see here, oh, uh, you fell. You see here how uh, these stars are in front of the uh, of the buildings. So here, this breaks our perspective. Um, so what we need to do is we need to render these things last. So when you change the layer, so um, what you're gonna do is go to when I start as a clone, um, grab a go to, um, and then go to back layer. So when you press play, all these stars are now going to be rendered in the back. So now if I Right, if I can even get there. Yeah, so now when I cross like this, see how my stars are in the back and then my buildings are one layer in front or are on a layer in front. And that's exactly what we want. And that's perfect. Okay, I'll give you guys a couple of seconds to catch up.
Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, so after we have uh, start as a clone, uh, what we need to do is we need to slowly move the objects depending on what button that we press. In this case, either A or D, and that's uh, that's where we're going to go. So um, of course, we need to make uh, after this a start as a clone. We need to make a loop. Uh, so let's grab a forever loop, uh, and uh, let's check if we press the button. So we're going to grab two if button if statements because we need to check for one going left and one going right. So if, and then we sense he pressed, uh, in this case, A or D. So A or, uh, what is it, D, right? Yeah, A or D. Oops, not C. OK, so we pressed A or C. Uh, A or, sorry, A or D. A is going left, D is going right. So with with pressing A, uh, of course we want to go uh, backwards. So we're gonna change we're gonna change X by a different number. So here we're gonna change X by. Um, here I'm gonna put point um, zero five. Uh, no, maybe a little bit bigger. Point zero eight. Maybe. Yeah, point zero eight. Okay. And then here on my other one, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna say change X by. And we're going to say negative 0 0.08, OK? So remember, one is positive and the other one is negative. So when you press play, uh, now you see your stars that are slowly moving. They're not moving that fast because uh, stars shouldn't be moving that fast. Uh, but they're slowly moving. If you can see, it's slowly moving to the right. If you want it to move a little bit faster, they can. Uh, maybe 0 0.1. Let's see, 0 0.1 and negative 0.1. And press the flag. I think point 0.1 works out too. Look at that. That's uh, moving nicely. Move backwards. It's going to go backwards. Okay. And what you want it to do is if I go all the way to my right, um, well, you won't be able to see this because it's uh, too slow. So let's, uh, for this, I'm just going to change the speed to uh, 10 and negative 10. Don't, don't do this. I'm just going to, just to show, just to show you a point, just to um, prove a point. So here, if I'm moving to the right, you see how the stars are moving on the back, right? And then there's no more stars. So what we need to do is whenever we, um, so I'm going to set this back to 0.1. Uh, so this is 0 0.1, and then this is negative 0 0.1, okay? So make sure you see that decimal number. There's a point right there, okay? Uh, so what we want to do is we want to check, uh, are we in our, in our bounds? So if we pass our bounds, uh, we want this number to, uh, we want a random number to generate, and that's going to spawn a new, uh, a, a new, well, it's not going to spawn, it's just going to change its position. So here we're going to say if, I'm going to go to our if statement, uh, if up here, oh, down here, and we're going to say if um, our x position is less than, so here we're going to go to motion. And we're going to grab our x position. And remember, this edge is negative, 100, negative 235. So here we're going to say if our x position is negative, uh, it's less than negative 235, that means we just cross the, uh, the left uh, border. Um, we're going to go to, uh, go to, okay, go to. And uh, what we want is we want uh, a, a our positive 235 because it's going to show up on the other side. And then our y is going to be our random number. So this random number, just duplicate our, our other random number we uh, we did here with the y. So it should say pick a random number between 0 and 150. And we're going to put this in y. So now when you press play, now it's going to, well, let me make this faster so you guys can see. I'll put this 10 and negative 10. Now when I press play, so now you see the stars. They're always looping around. Okay? The stars are moving, and they're being random. And that's exactly what we want. OK? So let me set this back to 0 0.1. Let's put 0 0.1. Uh, 0 0.1 and negative 0 0.1. And then uh, now we have this. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to do the opposite. So what if uh, the numbers are going uh, backwards? So uh, uh, going greater than 235. So if the numbers are greater than 235, then we want to spawn a 
uh, another random uh, location at the negative location because now the stars are going this way because you're traveling the opposite way. Uh, so to do this, uh, we're going to duplicate this block. Okay. And we're going to change this. And um, we need to grab a different, so it's not less than, it's greater than. So we need to grab the other operator block. So the opposite. So we're going to just transfer this, remove this one. And instead, we're going to put 235. Okay. And then here, our x is going to be negative 235. Okay. Because we wanted to snap back to its original uh, to the negative location. So now, if I uh, if I put this in motion, so let me do negative ten again. And then I go forward, and now I go backwards. Now you can see my stars; they're spawning randomly. Okay. Even when I go back, they're going to be random, so they're not going to be in the same location. And that's exactly what we want. Okay. Let me change this back. Let me put this to one. Actually, let me see what what it looks like with one. Actually, one's pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. You can change it to one and negative one. I, I think it looks good. Okay. And then finally, uh, the last thing you want to do, uh, or if you want, uh, in your backdrop, you can add a, a moon um, just to make it look a little better. I'm just going to add a, yeah, a big moon there. And uh, that's it. <laughs> make it nice, big, and white. And it's uh, the moon is follow basically kind of like following us, while the stars in the background are are um, are, are in a parallax scroll. Okay. Anyone need help with uh, with this um, part? Yeah, I'll give you guys a couple of uh, seconds to, or a minute, or I'll give you two minutes to finish this up. Sorry, I was working on my enemy. Can you see? Can I see the other side of the code? This, this is uh, the other side of the code. So this is the part of the, the other side. Which one? The other side. This one. The other side. This way. That's why. Well, what do you mean this way? Well, I have the code right here. This is all the code I've been working on right now. Is it only up right there? Up. Wait, what are you talking about? What sprite do you want to see? The sprite you are on. Yeah, sprite three, and then this other code. Uh, we we already did this code. Right. Oh, you weren't following along uh, from the beginning. Because I was trying to work on the enemy. Ah, uh, I see. Okay, yeah, there's no problem. Yeah, yeah, it's right here. It's right here. Don't worry about it. Let me know if, you, uh, if something doesn't work out. Same thing with you, Tony. Let me know if something doesn't work out. And Isaac, too.
<laughs> okay, does anyone have any more questions? They keep uh, keep losing in the game. Honey, do you have any questions? My high score is 370. That's good. Hey, guys. Uh, so does anyone have any more questions? Uh, because that is it for today. So we added uh, collections. Wait, I'm still working on it. OK, no problem. Anyone else has questions? Have questions, sorry.
Okay, um, I, I think that's, that's it. Most of you guys, I think you guys are customizing your stuff. I, I don't I don't know, but if you guys don't have any more questions, then that's it for today. Um, I'm gonna call it, I'll stop recording. <laughs>